Welcome to Lesson 6, Part 2, Active Fire Mapping with Remote Sensing. The Earth is surrounded by many different sensors that are all collecting unique information. There's much more than just visible blues, greens, and browns to our Earth, though. Hidden in the reaches of the electromagnetic spectrum, there is, there is an array of information that can be collected about the Earth. If you know where and when and how close to look. To really understand how active fire mapping works, we first need to understand what we're looking at and where it came from. When working with GIS, you'll work with a variety of satellite imagery, and knowing its resolution is vital to its proper implementation and application. For this exercise, you'll be working with data from two different types of sensors. MODIS, or Moderate Resolution Imaging Spectral Radiometer, and VIRS, Visible Infrared Imaging Radiometer Suite. We will use these sensors to discuss the three types of resolution, which are spatial, temporal, and spectral. You may be the most familiar with spatial resolution in reference to your camera. You likely know that a higher megapixel is going to give you clearer, more detailed images. The world is so complex that in order to get something visual in digital form, it needs to be simplified or averaged. A pixel is the averaging of information over an area into a single value. The size of the area being averaged is the spatial resolution. As you can see in the image, pixels that are 250 kilometers by 250 kilometers make it very difficult to distinguish detail on the landscape when compared to a 28 kilometer by 28 kilometer image. So why not always have larger pixel sizes? All that detail in those finer resolution images take up a lot of memory and make it so you can't get as large an area as often. This being the temporal resolution, which we'll go to next. The example to the right is a higher resolution image of the ground with active fire detection points from VIRS overlaid. The square is the area on the ground that is averaged into one central value in the center. Therefore, if you have an active fire point, then fire could be anywhere within that pixel. In the case of VIRS, the spatial resolution is 375 kilometers. MODIS, on the other hand, has a spatial resolution of 1 kilometer. Temporal resolution is how often an image is acquired. For many features of the Earth, frequent observations would not be necessary. Vegetation, for example, does not change so rapidly that daily observations are required. Fire, on the other hand, changes very rapidly. And for a sensor to be most useful, frequent acquisition is critical. As mentioned previously, there's a trade-off made in spatial resolution when a higher temporal resolution is required. Satellites often sit in clusters on the same platforms. It is the platforms that move them through space. One MODIS sensor passes over a single spot on the Earth two times a day. It is sun-synchronous, meaning that it passes over the same spot at around the same time each day. With MODIS, there are actually two sensors on two platforms, and they are on opposite ends of the Earth. This means that the Earth is viewed by MODIS up to four times a day, twice from Aqua and twice from Terra. VIRS is relatively new to the sky and follows the same flight path but on a different platform. It also goes over two times a day. There are plans for an additional VIRS sensor to go up in the next five years. Other, more higher resolution sensors, such as Landsat, where your land fire data came from, go over every 16 days. Still other higher resolution sensors only take images when they're ordered. The third type of resolution is spectral. What we see is just a tiny part of the energy that's being emitted from the Earth. Everything on the Earth emits a unique signature and different satellites are turned to look at specific places along the electromagnetic spectrum to pick up details about certain surface and atmospheric characteristics. MODIS and VIRS are, among other things, uniquely designed to look at fire. These sensors were designed for this purpose, and specific equations have been developed to use the information collected from the sensors to extrapolate more information about the fire, such as intensity. 
The data that is immediately available from these sensors is often unrefined and contains some errors, either false or missing detections. Refining these data takes time, and often, in fire management, more immediate products are required. The data that you'll be working with in this lab are called near real time, which means that it has not gone through the detailed evaluation process yet and should not be used for scientific study, but is acceptable for immediate active fire mapping. MODIS and VIRS have become instrumental in large-scale active fire mapping. The data are publicly available to view and download, and managers can use them to help monitor overall activity on large wildfires and even potentially identify new, smaller fires. Globally, monitoring wildfire activity is becoming increasingly important to track biomass removal, and therefore all other earth processes that are affected by their removal. In this lab, you're going to be working with the fire progression data from the Pioneer Fire of 2016 to see how the active fire points from MODIS and VIRS match up to the fire perimeters for several days of fire growth. This lab will touch on only a small portion of the processes that could be performed with this data. So as you work, keep in mind other analysis that could happen with this data that you might be able to use for your final project.